Hi friends, welcome to video number seven in our Was Jesus Tolerant series. And we're looking at something Jesus did tolerate. And this is an interesting one. We see that Jesus did in fact tolerate foolishness or lack of understanding, if you will. We actually see in people that came to Jesus that Jesus was really quite tolerant of their foolishness or their limited understanding. There's an amazing story we see where actually a very uh, recognized uh, religious leader of the day, a great teacher of the day in Israel, came to Jesus at night because he wanted to come in secret, and his name was Nicodemus. Nicodemus came to Jesus at night and wanted to ask Jesus questions. He, he needed to do it secretly because it was he was not supposed to be seen with Jesus because Jesus was controversial at that time. And so Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night and is asking Jesus questions, asking him things about uh, life eternal. And Jesus is answering the questions and Jesus is saying things to him. And at one point we see Jesus say, you are a teacher of Israel and yet you don't understand these things. And he wasn't being harsh to him, but Jesus clearly was like saying, you should understand these things. You should understand the sayings of old, the, the, the written scriptures. You should understand these things, but you don't. And Jesus then would go on to explain these things further to Nicodemus. And I believe Nicodemus went away that night having questions answered. Uh, maybe he didn't understand everything, but some of the big questions he was asking, Jesus had answered them for him. This is a great Great story because here we see someone seeking answers but doesn't have the understanding. Maybe you might even say someone you know that's a bit foolish, really, or, or but you're certainly not educated or certainly not uh, with a great level of understanding in the moment. Here we see Jesus tolerating that person. He was tolerating the fact that they didn't have understanding. He was tolerating the fact that they didn't know the answers to these bigger questions. That they didn't have the answers or have the right responses about the big questions of life like eternity. And Jesus took time to answer those questions. That's encouraging for us because I think all of us have questions about the big issues of life, have big questions uh, about things of life. Why is there suffering in the earth? Uh, why did these people die unexpectedly? Or what will exactly happen when we die? What is eternity going to hold for us all? We don't know all the answers to these things. And yet Jesus says, come to me and let me talk to you. Let me give you understanding about these big questions that you're asking. But what we see is Jesus tolerating, I believe, uh, the tolerating the foolishness or limited understanding, but also tolerating and being very favorable towards people that are searching. Well, that's what we see here in this story of Nicodemus and in other accounts of Jesus. Is You see Jesus very, uh, very favorable towards people that are searching. Or, or in my language, they're hungry for answers. They're hungry for truth. I think Jesus liked it. I think the Father likes that. I think He actually honors those that are hungry. He actually honors people that are hungry for truth. Seeking truth. And, and I want to tell you, I want to say something even a little bit controversial. They could be of a different religion. They could be a, a, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Hindu. I believe if those uh, people of another that are completely sort of currently opposing Jesus, in a sense, people of another religion, even if they're seeking answers, even if they're, if they're, if they're seeking truth, I've seen instance after instance of Jesus coming to them in mercy and looking favorably upon them and bringing answers to them because they were seeking truth. Truth. Even an atheist. There are great stories of atheists like Lee Strobel, uh, the great uh, scholar Gary Habermas, who were atheists seeking answers though. They were atheists, but they were seeking answers. And Jesus gave them answers. Jesus met them with truth over time because they were searching for truth. They didn't have the understanding. You might even say they were in opposition to Jesus at that point in time. But Jesus 
Jesus honored the seeking of their heart, the yearnings of their heart for truth. I remember I was uh, about 12 or 13 years old and uh, I was going to a, a school in Canberra, Australia. And uh, I, was, I, I would tell my friends that I'm Christian, that I love God, I love Jesus, I love the Holy Spirit. And I would, I would be open about my Christian faith. And, and a lot of my friends would tease me about that as a young man. They would, they would you know, uh, give me you know, a whole lot of hard time about that and laugh at me and tease me and poke holes in it and ask me questions. And I remember there was a moment where uh, I got another guy, his name was Matthew, I remember it well, and another Matthew said something to me on a bus one day when we were coming home from school. And Matthew said to me, to me, Matthew, hey, you know Jesus was a Jew? Do you know Jesus was a Jew? And you're a Christian. Why aren't you a Jew if Jesus was a Jew? You know what? In that moment, I had no idea what to say. I, I was completely stuck, if you will, what to respond to that. I didn't know what to say. I had no response. And to be honest, can I be honest? I felt like a bit of an idiot in that moment because I didn't know what to say. Now, I know now that, yes, Jesus was a Jew and the gospel is first for the Jew, but then also for the Gentile. And by grace, the gospel has now come to the Gentiles. And Jesus is a Jewish savior for Israel, but he's also a, our Messiah and our Savior for us as Gentiles, and the gospel has now come to the Gentiles. So I now know the answer to that. But in the moment, I had no idea. I had no idea what to say to that. You know, I, I thank God that that didn't rule me out from being used by God, that my limited understanding, my inability to answer that question on the bus that day didn't like rule me out from being used by God. And there've been many instances where I've been asked questions by people and I've, I've not known the answer. I've had limited understanding. I've no doubt been in foolishness. You know, I can be encouraged just like you, that there are times where we're in limited understanding. We're even in what I would call foolishness, but we can still not be precluded from certainly the love of God, relationship with God, and being used by God. Friends, we can have limited understanding. We can even be foolish and make poor choices at times. I've met people, they've said, you know, but years ago, I, I made, I married someone I shouldn't have married and it ended in divorce. Or I took a position in this firm or, or I went to this country and lived there and I knew I shouldn't have done that and I did it anyway and it ended badly. We can make foolish decisions. We can have limited understanding and it does not preclude us from the love of God. It does not preclude us from relationship and it does not preclude us from being used by God. That's great news. So just know, be encouraged. Jesus tolerates our foolish decisions. Jesus tolerates our limited understanding and he's taking us more and more into his, into his image, into being more like him. If we follow him and we serve and we have a hunger and a yearning for more truth in our hearts. Hope that encourages you. Have a great day.